Who are we talking about? And who is this? I consider myself a human doing this human thing. Ooh. Like, I am all things, nothing, and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna get that tattooed. Because it don't matter. We here with it. Like, we are really... We're here with it. Here with it. Mm -hmm. When um, I introduce you, you could, you can look at the camera and be like, I'm dying. And then whatever you want to say, free game. Don't care. Don't care. If I want to be this table right here, I can be this table. That don't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we do? Like, what? Hi, and welcome to season two of Talk About It with Kate. I'm Kate, and if you're new to this, welcome to the party. And if you're true to this, thanks for sticking around. So... Guys, today is a very exciting day for me, as last episode was, which if you didn't check it out, I'm going to need you to go ahead and do that and then come right on back. However, I have a very special guest today, but I'm going to get right into that in a minute. So I'm keeping you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, okay? And for those who are true to this, you know that I love class participation. You know I love to put a question on my story and hit you guys in the noggin because I want you to think a little bit about you know, what we're going to talk about. So let me go ahead and get right into that per usual. So today's episode question is, if you could give your younger self advice, what would you say? I'll start off with mine because I realize I don't ever tell you guys what I would think. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell my younger self that it's a thousand percent okay to be yourself. Don't be afraid to say what's on your mind. Don't let anybody dim your light or tell you that you're too loud or tell you that you need to sit down because the fact of the matter is you don't need to. And when you're in your 20s, like now, everybody's gonna eat that shit up. So just do it. Don't be afraid, okay? So we're gonna see what y'all had to say. And let me tell you, we love class participation because there's so many responses. <laughs> okay. Um, these are kind of all over the place. I did not order these because I think it's funny to be a little chaotic, a little, little rambunctious in this little, little live, okay? Um, so we're going to get into these responses and then we're going to shoot over to my guests. But <laughs> you guys said, don't get married so young. Yes, okay, don't get married too young because, you know, I mean, I don't even want to get married, so... <laughs> Let me focus. Okay. Always wear a condom. Yes, younger self, wear a condom. But wear a condom now. Right now. <laughs> Please. Um, do what you're doing. Don't give your energy to everyone. That is true. I think that it's important to keep that to yourself. And let me pause in these responses really quick and say that if you are telling your younger self this, you need to be telling your current self this as well. So I hope that this isn't information that you're just throwing out there and not putting into practice. Okay. Next is, there's no traffic in your own lane. Keep it pushing, okay? Stop worrying. You will end up exactly where you're meant to be every single time. Save the money in your piggy banks. Please, <laughs> please, let's save our coins. Um, don't be stupid. Yes, don't be stupid. Keep on pursuing your dream. You got the music in you. I'll cry, I'll cry. Don't be in such a hurry to fall in love. Explore, travel, and be young. Don't stress out. Everything will fall into place. Enjoy your life and be confident in yourself. Be kinder to yourself and know your worth. To get my ass to school and get a high paying job to buy a house before having kids. Yes, stay single. <laughs> <laughs> um, whatever you want, go get it. Nothing is too good for you. Never ever, I'm saying ever ever, dim your light to be acceptable for someone's version of you. Choose your friends wisely. You know you need to leave all this mess, so just do it, girl. The only thing holding you back is your mind. Failure is a better feeling than regret. It's in you, not on you. Live in every moment, nothing matters. Let loose, be a little risky. <laughs> Marry Caitlin? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, to enjoy life and not try to grow up so fast. Don't date that man in all caps. Babe, if you're telling yourself this right now, you better not date that man ever again. We're going to circle back on you. <laughs> Your mistakes will not define who you are. Don't be in such a rush to grow up. 
Don't change who you are to please others. Stay true to yourself. And finally, the best is yet to come. <laughs> you guys, I love those responses so much. Honestly, when I was reading them last night, um, I honestly was like, this is the most beautiful segment I think I've ever had because you guys really are speaking to your younger selves. And it's like I can envision that for you, you know. Mm -hmm. So moving on. <laughs> Today's guest is one of my favorite people on this planet, the most brightest star in the galaxy, the most beautiful soul to walk this earth. It is none other than my best friend, Dime. And before, before you get to take a look at this beautiful being, let me just go ahead and say, you can find Dime in Target on Vanderpump Rules currently for Nick's for Urban Decay, Kaja Beauty, PopSocket, Visa, Google Pixel, and so much more. I have caught my best friend in major stores, on billboards, on the internet, on television, and on YouTube, okay? If you go to React's YouTube channel, she's over there too. So, without further ado, dive. Ah! Hi. <laughs> I'm Dime. I'm rebranding as Dime Me now. Spell it. D I M E. Two Y's. Not one. Two Y's. Yes. Two Y's. Um, I don't know where like that nickname came out of nowhere, but it was so cute that it had to stick. Like, I that's feel the like one. One day somebody called you Dime and it stuck. And then everyone started calling you Dime and I felt late. I was like, <laughs> who are we talking about? And who is this? And then you changed your Instagram name, and I was like, it's stuck. It's, it's, it's stuck, but diamond. I love it. Do you feel yeah. like I just took your whole introduction away? Do you feel like? No, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I also can cook. Oh, oh, <laughs> let's not even talk about Diamond's cooking, please. Actually, let's talk about it. Dime is the reason why I gained like 20 pounds last year. But that's the okay. good, the good twenty, the good twenty, the, good the happy 20. twenty. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, your pronouns. Um, so for a while I was going by they, them, um, but I also feel like I'm that girl a lot of times. So the she is back. So they, she. They, she. Know. Yeah. They, she, that girl. Yeah. 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 yeah that's about right. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> so let's talk about your journey. For those of you who don't know, and most of you probably don't, Diamond is what we like to call a butterfly uh unicorn my my dad likes to call diamond unicorn um in the evolution of beauty in all things binary and non-binary diamond is a queer creative from los angeles or in los angeles and has quite literally redefined the laws of what gender conforming looks like because we have this gorgeous 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 <laughs> being here now but what you don't know is the switch up game is crazy. Yeah. I think you started the get you a, the girl who could do both. You remember that? Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, get you yeah. the girl that could do both. So Dime used to dress more masculine, more masculine presenting, but was still going by she, her. Mm -hmm. And that was a very young, a very young start for you. Yeah. Very, very boxed in version of me yeah. or like feeling like I had to be like that. Okay. Or not even that, because I was comfortable that way, but I feel like that was the only way that I could be, really. Do you feel like because you came out as gay quite young that you felt you had to start dressing as what the typical lesbian? I think it was just more so, um, I wore a lot of like, I would say now how I present myself is very similar to me as a teenager, like before this, you know, masculine part of me came about. But I think I was just wearing like a lot of little clothes, showing off a lot of things and like really wasn't comfortable with my body in those clothes. And so I would like, I play basketball. So I would wear basketball shorts and stuff and be like, hey, it's comfortable. Like this feels so much better. Yeah to, you know, like imagine wearing booty shorts at school all day and wearing uh, crop tops and getting dress code all the time. And then after school, you got on basketball shorts and like comfortable clothes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, that just felt more comfortable to me. And so that's what initially made me be like, I wanna dress like this more. 
But my mom was not having it. As most parents do. She was not There is a little it. bit of a pushback when your child starts to be everything else other than what you envisioned. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is obviously an unfairness in that, but you are going to be who you are regardless of what your parents think. So if you are a parent now, a millennial parent specifically. Let them kids wear what they want to wear. And be who they want to be. Or comfortable be. Yeah, like let your, let your children express themselves how they want to you know and that's really what it was i felt like i was in a lot of spaces and it, it wasn't just parents like it was you know past partners too but i felt like i had to be i had to look or express myself in a certain way that like matches with them or like works for them the and it was never about me right so we opened the show saying if you could speak to your younger self what would you say so what would you say um, rest and have boundaries um, and say no to things. Yeah, just saying no to things that I really didn't want to do or, and uh, I think, yeah, I think that's it. Like saying no. Is that advice that you would give to the baby gays, the baby studs, the baby theys in today's world? I say that's just more an in general thing. Like that's for everybody. Like if you, if you really have a relationship with your intuition, then right off the bat, you know, your body's gonna tell you that like, this is something you don't wanna do or something you're not comfortable with doing. So like, listen to that and honor that voice or that feeling that you feel. And yeah, I think that's more for everybody than just the they thems and all. Like, I think everybody should take time out to really think, do I really wanna do this? Yes. Is this comfortable? Do I even like this? Cause I didn't do that and I didn't have the space to do that. Like I couldn't tell my mom I didn't like a shirt she was buying. Cause like she put in, you know, she put in, in work to buy this shirt for me. Right. So you gonna wear this shirt. Cause I bought this shirt and it's like, now if I don't want to wear this shirt I'm not gonna wear it and I don't care who buying it or what they did to buy it. Like it's not, it doesn't work for me, you know? You have hard boundaries. Very much. Very so. much. I love that you said if you have a relationship with your intuition. That just hit so hard for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel as though you and I relate very heavily on that because we're very intuitive, very- We're twitches. We're, tw we're, twitches. we're twitches. Yeah, we're very um, empathetic people. We're very much affected by other people's energy. Mm -hmm. And I think that the most beautiful thing about our relationship is that we both respect each other's boundaries, are aware of the boundaries that we set when we go out, mm -hmm. you know, so you, you've said things on my behalf before. I've said things on your behalf yeah. before, especially where, where I'm like, Diamond's not going to rock with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you won't even tell me things. And then you'll tell me later, like, this is what happened. And I just cut that quick. And I was yeah. like, see, see, I knew that. <laughs> Everybody yes. needs, you need a best friend like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, we ain't gotta, we ain't gotta talk about it. We here with it. Like we are really, we're here with it. Here with it mm -hmm. most of mm -hmm. the time. But that's because we listen to each other and we, we, and that's the thing. You can have these boundaries, but another part that plays into having boundaries is the people, the people around you who respect those boundaries, like and who you ain't got to keep reminding. Exactly. Like I said, no. And cutting out those people who don't respect them, who won't respect them because they just don't care, you know? Exactly. And I think you speaking on how you didn't used to be comfortable and how you had had to go through a lot of changes mm -hmm. is even crazier now because you're a full-fledged model. Like, <laughs> let's talk about Who that. Who would have even thought? That is, I feel like other than random, like the side things I do, modeling was the most random. Cause I used to tell, like, I think my whole life I've been told like I should model even as a kid, but I would be like, no. And then becoming a photographer, that was like my main thing for, I think this year would be seven years of doing that. Yeah. That I would be like, I would never be on the other side of the camera. Like I'm so awkward. And I just kept telling myself that I boxed myself in big time when it came to showing, you got, showing myself. You got in your own way. Definitely. And it was crazy. Let's talk about how we manifested our life currently. Let's talk about that. On we the have 10 to, we freeway have to. <laughs> going westbound, Monday through Friday, we talked about the life that we have right now. Right now. So Diamond and I used to work together. Uh, we had a collective in downtown Los Angeles called the Dimension Collective. We ran it 
uh, it was an artist collective where we rented out spaces to other artists. We had stylists, photographers, makeup artists, um designers dancers dancers musicians. we it was a packed out house and it was one of the most beautiful things i think we have done to mm-hmm. date and diamond was our house photographer i was the in-house um makeup artist and director and diamond and i worked together every day pretty much yes. like i think we all of diamond shoots i either helped on the collaborative end or i did the makeup for mm-hmm. but let me tell you we used to live in the inland empire Driving from Los Angeles that to traffic. <laughs> to the Inland Empire is uh, 10 know. hours of traffic. Mm-hmm. And we used to just sit and we didn't even know that we were manifesting at the time. We had no yeah, idea. We just would just talk. We would like, just say, like, wouldn't it be so cool? Right. Or we should do this. Mm-hmm. Or we should. And quite literally, Diamond used to take all my photos all the time. And just like randomly you'd be like okay like I like my outfit today can you take my picture Mm -hmm. and then that would be like part of my portfolio and then I would do your makeup sometimes too and then you started getting into fun like Mm -hmm. graphic looks and things like that and I think we both said no we just enjoy being behind the camera like yeah I always enjoyed being in behind the scenes and obviously you did too and then I was like I remember we were driving one day and I was like we could do anything we set our mind to quite literally we could do anything and i think i got signed first and then you started taking pictures with your friends out here because you moved to la first yeah and then all of a sudden you were a signed model and then we were both booked and busy and we one day literally (laughs) during covid looked at each other and we were like what 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 What? do we do like what but we talked about this we did talk about it and that was in that was in 2017 18 17 yeah too long ago I don't, even, don't even say it. Don't even <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know. I don't even say it. 2020 kind of threw me off with timing, period. Yeah. But that just shows, like, time don't really exist. Like, you can get all these things done in a matter of, like, a yeah. few years or a few months. But your life can change so quick. Time don't matter. Like, time is of the essence. I wouldn't, I, I, w- I would say even, like, a year ago. Yeah. I wouldn't think I would be like doing all the things or yeah. be being seen in the way that I've been being seen. Like that's crazy. And you also do hair. <laughs> Diamond is a braider. We 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 tap into the braiding every now and again. But if you ever see my hair late, <laughs> Diamond did it. So let's talk about how you are tatted. Your Up. brows are bleached. You're yeah. queer and you're a model in LA. Do you think that? It's been easy for you in this day and age to be all of these things because back before you couldn't be any of these things. No. Not openly, at least. Not at all. Um, I would say in the modeling industry, there I, I still do run into like, you know, some some clients are looking for a specific something. Mm-hmm. And sometimes my look could be a little too much for what they're looking for. And I kind of like obviously getting told no based off the based off of like things you can't change like I can't take off all my tattoos like (laughs) it is kind of like like dang but I just accepted that like what is for me will come to me and that's usually how it goes but um yeah I would say being like openly queer I'm also a part of a queer collective where our mission statement is about being openly queer artists in the industry it's like we get told no sometimes because like some some people aren't that inclusive just yet and that's the thing it, it's happening and it's growing like people want more bleached eyebrows bald heads crazy makeup like they they want to be they they want to be more inclusive mm-hmm. nowadays but there's definitely still those clients that are you know still playing it safe and I, I feel like that's okay. Like y'all doing things mm-hmm. the way y'all do y'all things. And um, that shouldn't stop you from whatever you're trying to do. Like basically, yeah. It's not for you. Yeah, yeah. it's like if it's not. Nothing is gonna get in the way of you becoming successful. Some exactly. things, what do I love to say? Rejection is just redirection. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and who tea. knows? That is T. That's, that's the T. Rejection is just redirection. Mm-hmm. That statement alone has quite literally saved me from so much disappointment and so much heartache because it's like, mm-hmm. okay, this just wasn't for me. And I have a crazy fear of rejection. Like, I get 
so and it's crazy because a lot of my anxiety I really be like like I can kind of decipher what's my intuition and my anxiety mm -hmm. these days so I don't let it like you know come out of me but there's a lot of times where I even like you know calling Pizza Hut and <laughs> making that order like I'm scared that that's gonna go wrong like tell it's them just I like, set you <laughs> right they they ain't gonna tell me no if I tell them that you sent me but yeah it's like I get so scared of being told no that sometimes that make me be like, mm, I'm just not even gonna go for it. Cause I just already know it's a no. And and that is another way of, of getting in your own way. Yeah. So it's like, that's why I try to really work through that internally before I let that come out of me and ruin, you know, whatever plans I had. So what do you think that fear of rejection is? Like what about rejection scares you? Um. Maybe because I, I'm an overthinker. So I think about things before it happens and I kind of see them happening this way. And so I get scared that like, if it's not happening that way, then what am I going to do? Like, I didn't see this. I didn't uh, see this coming, you okay. know, like something interfering sometimes throws me off because I'm like, I, I didn't, I didn't think this one through when I was thinking about yeah. this whole thing. So it's like I, I try to still create the idea, but not like hold on to it as much and be okay with like change and yeah. things like that. A lot of people are not okay with change. And I think that that's a problem with society in, in totality is mm -hmm. like you are so afraid of change that you're gonna put new laws in place. You're gonna pass bills. You're gonna do all these things to keep the same shit that them <laughs> founding fathers or whoever the fuck whoever they were wrote a bajillion years ago who not even here to read <laughs> not one thing you can't even revise this <laughs> you can't even you can't <laughs> like and honestly it was they did themselves dirty because i just feel like they're now their ancestors are we're all paying for it you know yeah but that does make sense i think that the fear of the unknown is also vast mm -hmm. but i kind of find beauty in it Personally, yeah, adapting is my also my favorite thing to do, though. Like I do love it's just that that one moment that's like I was not expecting this. But like yeah. what comes after that is always so even like even bigger and better than what I was seeing for myself, yeah. like what I was thinking about. But it's just that that sweet spot moment of like I did not see this coming. But and that's scary, you know, not yeah. knowing. But adapting for me is is really easy it just take me just like a hot second to kind of like get it together and then because i'm very cardinal i'm very much like okay so how are we gonna move forward yeah how are we gonna fix this how are we gonna change this yeah. and it just take me a second to have that like i gotta get it out i gotta get the like this is crazy <laughs> out first and then i can like beautifully adapt to just about anything so do you consider yourself an entrepreneur i mean i guess yeah like what do you consider yourself <laughs> um I consider myself a human doing this human thing. Ooh. Like, just, I don't know. You're don't experiencing know. the life that the mm -hmm. life is giving you. Exactly. Wow. You're all things. You're an embodiment. I'm all things and nothing and everything. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> I am all things, nothing, and everything. I'm gonna get the it don't tattooed. matter. <laughs> it, none, like, I don't know. That's a bar. It don't really matter. Like, nothing, a lot even, of, matters. nothing even matters. Shout out, Lauren. but then it do. But then it does. It's it's deep, but it's not that deep. Exactly. It matters, but not too Ooh, much. Not that deep. Yeah. Heavy on the not that deep. Heavy on the not that deep. Babe. Because, yeah, I just feel like some things aren't really worth like taking yourself out of your whole thing. Like, it, yeah. Shit, don't be that deep. I feel like <laughs> this year in particular, I've really honed in on releasing control and understanding that if I am trying my damnedest to make something work and it is not working, no matter how hard I'm trying, uh, surrender. It, what, what do they say? What do they say? <laughs> it's above me. <laughs> it is so far above, above me, baby. Me. And if it come back to me, then okay, maybe it was meant mm -hmm. for me. But I'm not going. I'm not going to lose myself in trying to make something monetary work. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What do we say? Yeah. 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 
<laughs> yeah. Because well, yeah. with all things being said, where do you see yourself in the next three years? In the next three years, I would hope to be on more billboards in the midst of that. Say, I will be. <laughs> I will be. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I will be on more billboards mm-hmm. and, and just expanding more as a model and um, creating, like, I don't know, my modeling career is what brings me closer to myself. So I would like really want for that to be even bigger than what it is right now in the next three years. But I don't know, I see myself like, three years is not that far. It's not that far, that's why I'm asking. I, people always love to be like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And I'm like, babe, I don't even know why <laughs> I, I see myself tomorrow. I'm next week, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> but, but if I really had to think about it, yeah. I think three years, because three years ago, we, it's been three years since COVID. Since pandemic. Yeah, and yeah. Three solid years. I see myself definitely resting more. I love that. Like, I I think as time, because I used to be, who I used to be the two job, full time student type person. Dang. And so I'm resting more and more as time goes on. So, I like, in three years, I would want to be able to do that even more than I am now. Yeah. And, and like still getting my work done, still doing my work. Like I want to be in more places and being being seen more. But yeah, at least in three years, I want to like chill more. I'm gonna be thirty in three years. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh! I just knew you. Are you? Are you? You are gonna be thirty. Yeah, you're turning twenty-seven this year. Yeah. I'm gonna ow, be ow, thirty. Ow, ow. Oh my gosh! Ow. I've known Dime since Dime was eighteen. Oh yeah, I was I was like I just smelt my diploma when we met. Yeah, you're a baby. (laughs) In three years, I'll be like thirty-two. I want to start having kids in my (laughs) thirties. So I'm like, I want to be preparing, like you know, taking care of myself more in the next three years. Yeah, I'm gonna be an auntie times ten. (laughs) <laughs> TTK TTK yeah I got a lot of kids that aren't mine a lot of kids that'll be your life yeah yeah somebody else gotta do it so, get somebody else to do it <laughs> but you know I mean three years I feel like where do I see myself in three years I see this talk show hitting the charts babe okay all right you about to be like everybody look under your seat <gasps> Coachella passes for everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That you is, get a yacht, you get a boat. <laughs> you get a boat. You get a new phone. You you know Going what I'm saying? Up, yeah. The Oprah. Oprah, what's up? Mm-hmm. I'm coming for your spot, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. But not too much though. I, I you might want to be on my show and I could be on yours and we could do it together. Right. You get show your on? show to be my show. We could be shows switching <laughs> and me shows. <laughs> I would love that for me. Yeah, I think that I would love for my modeling career too to expand. Mm-hmm. I feel like right now I'm kind of limited with what I can do or with what I do do, just because I have repeat clients, you know, and like oh, yeah. things like that. But I see myself traveling so mm-hmm. much. In the next three years, I will have gone to Italy. I probably will have gone back to Ireland. I will go to Spain. These are the things that I'm going to do because traveling now in this part of my life is so important. I think that my 30s, I feel it, I smell it, it's coming. I feel yeah. refined, I feel- I wanna be on beaches and yeah, stuff. I feel like in my 30s for I sure. have a new taste for life. Like yeah. I, I was talking to my dad the other day and I was saying, why did I put so much pressure on myself to be a millionaire in my 20s? Like, why did I do that? <sighs> I put on an unreasonable amount of pressure on me to have me figured out before I turn 30. And I don't know why, because I, I have so many friends who are in their 30s and I'm like, yo, you're, we're, we're still young. Like yeah, we're still no, so young. 30 isn't, even, even, even 40 for, is still young. <laughs> yo, my <laughs> parents are in their 50s and they're still so young and fun and mm-hmm. like active. And I'm like, and my dad said something too. He said, when I was 25, having one of my mental breakdowns, <laughs> as I did in my, in my Ooh, um, mid-20s. Yeah, 25 was a mess. The 25 babe. breakdowns. I used to have <laughs> mental breakdowns all the time. So my dad said, Kate, why are you freaking out about your life at 25 right now? And I was like, well, because I don't have this and I don't have this and what am I going to do? And, 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 and he said, and stop. He said, <laughs> he said, I'm turning 50 this year. 
He said, you know what that is? 25 more years of life that you have to look forward to before you're 50. And you see me at 50. I'm young and I'm fun and I'm traveling and I have this money and I have my career. And what are you in a rush to get to? And I was like, oh, ease, ease. I no longer am rushing to an imaginary finish line that I made for myself because mm -hmm. what but does that be, do for me? It be ourselves. Get out of your own way. I think that's the I'm message like, of this I, podcast. Like, yeah, just I feel like a lot of people in their 20s are really hard on themselves. I know I am. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I think as millennials, we grew up in that culture that like never not working, that posting all your accomplishments, mm -hmm. the social media age. And then our parents, you know, they were in this mindset, too, that was like work, 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 yeah. work, work, work. And generationally, it is a curse because our parents, they didn't have social media, but they did that's when like middle class and like poor and rich was like evident you mm -hmm. know it was the age of the internet but mm. not social media before then they were they had war no internet no access to a lot of the things that our parents did but then now we have access to everything, everything. like we have the world at our fingertips and i think that there is a big disconnect in what that should mean and i don't even think that that was what the intended goal was mm -hmm. when the internet and social media was created. I think it was to make things easier, but like mm, if we as a things. society made things harder because that's <laughs> what humans did. It actually made things harder. If we're going to do anything, let's make things more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it, we, we can, let's reel it Why in. be a two step process when it can be eight? Well, that's what's the, what that's the mindset. What do we say? We do it for the plot. Do it for the plot. Don't do it for the plot. No. <laughs> let's just finish the story, babe. Just, let's wrap it up. You can wrap it up. Yeah, let's let's bring it back. Cause, mm -mm. right. Yeah, that's definitely the message of this podcast. Is like, get out of your own way. Yeah. Be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Yeah. And just yeah, just don't limit yourself. Like, or tell yourself that you can't do something. Like, you could. I, Tyler the Creator is like one of those people who've always been very loud about like you can be. He was like, if I want to be this table right here, I can be this table. That don't make no sense, but because he said that, <laughs> okay. then that's what he can be. Like it's it's yeah. all about really you and like how you show up for you, yeah. how you, how you see yourself and and what you see in yourself. And yeah, like we we just gotta stop being so hard on ourselves. And grace, giving grace is, I think that's yeah. what stops me from being hard on myself. Is being like I, I learned that I'm a person of cycles, so I know during this specific time I'm. I feel like this, so I'm going to give myself grace and not push myself past what I, you know, past my limit and what mm -hmm. I have, because I know during this time it's, it's fragile. It's yeah. real fragile. Knowing so, yourself. Yeah. So it's like, once you, once you just kind of pay attention to your patterns and your cycles within yourself, then you know when to give yourself grace or yeah. when to push yourself when you need to. Like, yeah. and so, yeah. Do you have a hold of your life? Would you get a grip? And get a grip. Get a grip. <laughs> get a grip and a strong one. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want, baby. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. that's the tea. That's the tea. That's the tea. That's well, the you tea. guys, we are gonna wrap up today's show. Dime, babe. We have these conversations all the time, right? But I'm so happy to be able to share it with anybody who may come across it because it was meant for you. If you come across this video, this was it was for meant for you. you. Yes. Well, I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'm so ha like I'm happy for. I've seen this from the start to where it is right now. And I'm gonna be seeing it for where it is when you giving out boats and stuff to people. <laughs> but like, I just love that this is where you are. Like, and it's so you. Isn't that? Like, this is like the most normal thing that you have done. Like, it's well, you. It's for me. Mm -hmm. And I would say this is the one thing that I did in my 20s that was actually for me and not because I thought that's what I should be doing. Like, you just, you don't have to put too much extra work into it. Mind you, all the things you did, you worked for and you, you know, you worked to get it. But like yeah. this one is just like you being yourself. You just yeah. got the tools. I do got the tools and you I got, got the, the team. Tools. Shout got the out team. to the team. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm so proud of you. I tell you all the time, but I want everybody. I want the whole world to know. I'm so incredibly proud of your evolution Thank and you. putting yourself out there and doing the shit that makes you happy for you. And I've seen people try to tear you down and take that shit away from you. And you mm -mm. shined even brighter because you are a diamond, a baby. Diamond, you baby. are a diamond. A diamond, baby. <laughs> I love you. And for everybody watching, please make sure you follow me, Caitlin Diaries, on Instagram. 
and Candy House LA mm -hmm. at or at Candy House LA on Instagram as well. We are also on YouTube, so make sure you're subscribing and getting all of our notifications for our next episodes because the guests are going to keep coming. The best is yet to come. And as always, stay beautiful. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> oh my god. That's we was talking. Talking. Chatting. Chatting. <laughs>